I'm Ed Morrissey from HotAir.com, here visiting with uh, Academy Award winning actor Richard Dreyfus, who's visiting CPAC. Welcome to CPAC. Thank you. Glad to have you here with us. And I understand that you are here uh, to talk a little bit about your initiative on civics and civility and politics, the, the, Dreyf the Dreyfus Initiative. Dot org. Dot org. The Dreyfus Initiative dot org. Tell us a little bit about the initiative and why you're here at CPAC to talk to us about that. Um, civics is one of those issues that uh, has no true opposition. It's something that should be taught to all of our young, whether they be whether they end up being liberal or conservative is irrelevant. And um, what has happened over the past some odd years is that civics has been removed from the curriculum at an accelerating rate. And what, what is left is how many branches of the government are there and how do you pass a bill through Congress, neither of which bear any resemblance to reality. And so I went to Oxford in late 2004, early 2005, and went to St. Anthony's College and uh, went to learn, actually uh, to produce a show, a broadcast. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, I don't want to do that. I want to do it for real. And so we formed a nonprofit. I've been there for the last four years. Uh, or my membership ran out. <laughs> and, um, but I was living in London and I thought I didn't want to go home and I want to stay here and I want to find out because I think of civics as the common denominator when you look at American society and ask what's wrong here, what's missing, sooner or later you get to the absence of civics. It's interesting because I was just writing about this, the uh, Intercollegiate Studies Institute did a, uh, a five-year survey on basic civics in American uh, American uh, population, 30,000 respondents. And they found that only 50% of the respondents could correctly identify the three branches of government in a multiple choice test. Now this is with the, with the answers in front of them. Only half of the people could actually pick out which of the four answers uh, identified the, the three branches of government. Only 57% um, knew what the Electoral College actually does. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you something. Jay Leno and ourselves, we make jokes about how stupid we are about history. Right. And we're not wrong, but that's not the target. The point is our cultural mythology. And that is something known to everyone is not taught in class. It is known by osmosis, by fairy tales, by glory tales, and by the history of every single family in this country. The only ones exempt, exempt from that are the ones we dragged here against their will and the ones we found here and killed. Everyone else shares the same cultural mythology that's somewhere in their family. Someone fled oppression in the form of caste and class designed by wealth. And after hundreds and thousands of years, finally someone made enough money to get their butt over to America, which was announcing a declaration of war on that curse, on that situation. We had been cursed, we as a race. You and yours will never rise. You're a shoemaker, your grandchildren will be shoemakers, and my heel will always be on your neck. And we bought it hook, line, and swallow. And then America announced, wait a minute, if you can get here, if you can literally make the journey, then you can rise by merit, and nothing will stand in your way. Institutionally. Institutionally, right. And so that was heard everywhere in the world from the Eskimos to the Togo Indians. And that's why people came here, that's why they come here, that's why they'll always come here. And the only ones who don't know about this literal political miracle are our own kids because we don't teach it. 
we don't we don't teach civics and we don't teach uh, an appreciation of the American uh, whether you call it American exceptionalism, the American dream, uh, American promise. I've heard it described a number of different ways, but but it, there is an exceptional period and there's an exceptional moment that is America where where caste and class did not apply institutionally. That's not to say operationally that right. there, there weren't barriers to overcome. And I think we're still overcoming those barriers to this day. But uh, how do you teach that appreciation? Uh, what is the Dreyfus Initiative? Uh, it consists of the following themes with each of those themes underscored by competitions and acknowledgments, etc. They are in this order. Glory tales and myths to kindergartners and first and second graders. And then reason, logic, clarity of thought, and critical analysis. Using dissent, debate, civility, and opposing views. Those tools which sharpen the intellect of any classroom and raises all boats is my curricula and we call it or they call it in education soft learning which says a lot because it's not rote it's not it's not geology and right. it's not biology right. that's hard learning as if we're going to need it and what we really are going to need are the development of the mind as an agile tool as, a, as something that can take whatever life throws at us and we are prepared to handle it. And they don't teach that. And I can understand people not teaching something because they can't afford it. I can understand they can't teach it because they don't uh, have enough hours in the day. Right. But that is not true of the foundational necessity of teaching civics. Civics comes before and trumps all other classrooms, all other subjects, because if you don't first raise up our citizenship, which is harder than being a doctor and harder than being a lawyer, yes. then they'll come back at us with subtler thievery and take that to the bank. You remember the banks that we used to rely on? I remember the banks. I remember that we the banks. used to rely on and don't. And I say that we have to teach soft learning as a critical necessity because after 13,000 years of, of civilization, where we have expended concentration, creativity, money, and effort only on one thing, and that is the knowledge of the technology of warfare, we have developed no spiritual restraints from using it. So that puts us right smack dab in the middle of a tsunami where, where what is changing is invisible beneath our feet and when the change hits us, it's going to hit us and irreparably change us forever. I am being told that we're just about wrapping up here. I want to thank you for stopping by. It's a pleasure speaking with you. And I actually just said that rather well, so repeat it. <laughs> you want me to repeat it right now? No, I mean repeat it. Oh, repeat it. it. Repeat because, it. Well, we're going to have this up Because the, the problem with television, for instance, or the, web, the website, right. is that it makes everything equal. Al-Qaeda is equal to the United States. Nonsense. Right. That this issue is equal to another. Nonsense. This issue comes first. The rest of it is bourgeois. This is critical. You have to get you have to get an understanding of this before you can get an understanding of all the other issues. All you get if you don't understand this is a front row seat at the decline and fall of the greatest idea for governance in history. Richard Dreyfus here at CPAC and at hotair.com. Thank you very much again. You're much appreciated.